it's Sage and I'm here in the new flat, which is why the video has been so delayed. However, we are here with chapter 906 and we're starting with the cover page. Now, the cover page is once again following the daily life of Orlumbus and this time with Columbus. Um, I guess the reference to a Columbus wasn't strong enough, so Oda decided to add some more. The first kind of parts of this chapter are Shirahoshi making her way up the stairs uh, with along with some of the other royals and there's these kind of large ominous figures in gateways, um, a statues kind of placed up again around the um, staircase so it's a it's a pretty like grandiose place and I think what it's meant to do is it's meant to be this kind of really showing the divinity of the celestial dragons um and why the reason i think that is because these figures are meant to represent how just just how ominous just how looming and just how powerful they are as a force now i waited for the viz for a reason because the name of mary joas it's Mary Joas, it's not Marie Joie, which is something I was saying, but I'm always wrong, so we should have known I was wrong. Carrying on what's happening, they are showing Shirahoshi and the other rules, the travelator that will move them across the ground and basically make it easier now they've reached the top to get to where they're going. However, Fukuboshi decides that he has a bad feeling about the Travelator and so he says I don't think we should use it and we find out that underneath the Travelator it's actually not technology and it's being pulled by slaves and one of the slaves says huff huff wheeze someone please save me and if that's not possible kill me instead which is well, it's depressing, but it does show you how savage the Celestial Dragons are. Now, moving forward, we then see Charlos again. Charlos is a bad seed, a very bad seed. We saw him in Sabodi after a mermaid, and now he's in Shirahoshi. Well... Hopefully he won't be planning on putting her in the piranha tank like the last one. Now moving forward, um, they reach the socialising plaza of the castle. All the royals and their escorts are meeting and talking. There's food, there are no weapons on the royals. Um, or the escorts, the escorts don't have their weapons either and everyone's kind of talking and we get these interesting moments where Shirahoshi's being proposed to by loads of people and of course in standard Shirahoshi style she says none of you are my type and I feel that because because how else do you say really nicely to a, a whole bunch of kingdoms that your son seems very pleasant but no and I think she does a good job, but nobody else believes that she does a diplomatic or good job, and so they do scold her a little bit. But next we get to see Rebecca and Vivi, and we get the moment that I was really hoping for, which is that moment of Rebecca, Vivi, and Shirahoshi discussing Luffy. And even the Tontatas get into this. We do have some really cool flashbacks um, with Crocodile, which is why this is, and we get to see Robin. We get to see Robin again in this chapter, which like, I don't care that it's a flashback because it's even pre-time skip Robin and pre-time skip Robin is best Robin. So like, thank you based Oda. And they're all kind of having a little cry, really excited to see each other and Shirahoshi overhears them which means they're talking a little bit too loudly about Luffy and I would like to see if there's going to be any consequence to that. And she goes, just now, were you talking about Luffy Summer? And, and Vivi has a look, a quick little think and goes, Luffy must have gone through Fishman Island. Luffy's clearly helped them too. We're big fans of Luffy too. 
and then Sai even seems to, you know, catch the eyes of Rebecca and he comes over. He's still the leader of the 13th generation of the Hapo Navy. Um, fair enough, Sai. You're doing good. You're doing good. But as soon as he gets back, he's going to cut ties, which is, which is clever because leaving Hapo without proper representation and proper escorts is probably not a plan for this reverie as this reverie may a be the last in Marijoie or Marijos as it is actually called or it could be that he wants to actually go to tell the Straw Hats what happened you never know he could actually be taking this as a double which would be really cool and I would like to see. Like, he is part of the Alliance. But then, Wapol and King Dorella, his trophy wife, um, appear and they once again get a bit of trivia to re-explain to the kind of more casual readers um, who Wapol is. You know, he's the former kingdom, uh, he's the former king of the drum kingdom. And that all kind of works. That that's all really good i'm liking having these flashbacks i think it makes it easier for readers who might be only casual to get really the references that are happening in this i think it makes it easier when we're going to have to reread this because this arc is i say we i'm going to reread this at least three or four times because we're going to get too much information and those little flashbacks reminding me exactly who these people are that's helpful like yeah i remember most of these obviously because they're relatively main characters but there may be somebody soon that we get flashbacks for that is going to be really useful and dr Kareha and dalton are also there who obviously are also big luffy fans so i'm excited to see if dr Kareha has a moment with rebecca vivi and shirahoshi where she's like you asking me uh secret to my youth <laughs> i want that i want that a lot i want her to come up to these very young beautiful women and say well i mean you look young for now but what about my <laughs> my years that don't show i, I like it i like kareha kareha is a very funny character a very um very much an idol kind of character for me and you know Vivi says it's good to see you again because obviously Vivi's already met them and oh, I'm so excited for Dalton to get to talk to to other Luffy fans and Kareha to talk to other Luffy fans and the Luffy fans to reunite because it's it's good it's a good chapter we once again get a little flashback reminding the more casual readers who these people are and then we get on to the meaty bit the meaty bit, which I think most of you have been ignoring what I've said recently and are only here to, to witness, which is uh, the start is Doflamingo, the undersea prison in Pell Down. What's up with solitary confinement? It's so lonesome. And of course, he's in level six to have solitary confinement. Um, are you perhaps protecting me, Magellan? <laughs> have they arrived? The assassins from up there? Now, I believe that's referring to up as in the celestial dragons and the world government up there. Um, not the marines, probably not the CP agents. Um, I think these are proper assassins who specialize um, in that. So maybe, maybe CP9, but I personally get the feeling that they may be unaffiliated due to the fact that while CP9 can get away with a lot of sins, all of that is really for the good of the verse and they can justify a lot of CP9's actions to be for the good of the verse. Whereas assassinating somebody already in prison feels like it's a purely celestial dragon contract. And then probably the most interesting panel we've had this year the revelation of what possibly is the national treasure of Merijos, a giant straw hat. Now I have heard 
theory upon theory upon theory of what this could possibly be. But I think the best thing to do is dissect what Doflamingo says and accept what we're seeing. So Doflamingo says, did they send an assassin here to shut me up in order to prevent me from telling anyone about the secret treasure hidden away in Mary Jo's? <laughs> Isn't it fine to reveal what it is already? Power degrades quickly anyway. It rots away in no time at all. <laughs> and then we cut back to Mary Jo's, a figure holding two wanted posters, not just Luffy's. And he goes into this secret vault and in the secret vault it appears, it's misty, it's foggy, so it's and it's frozen in the vault itself. And there is only one archway still lit up and in that archway is the giant straw hat. So, straw hat. I have heard lots and lots of different theories on what this could be. So I will only list on the ones that I feel are interesting. Now the interesting ones to me is, could it be Joy Boys? Could it be marking a grave? Could it be a magical hat? Could it be giant and therefore people want to make giants? to fill this hat, because obviously the government have been researching giantification for a long, long time. It's interesting. Um, and one of my personal favourites for interesting is if it's like um, the Disney classic Sleeping Beauty, where the evil queen descends the staircase, clack, 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 down into a secret cellar where she consults her mirror to find out stuff. So the concept is that this room or this archway displays either what they should fear the most, um, you know, or this object rather than it being like a mirror that shows it, it could be an object like a that is almost like a bogart but transforms into, you know, um, whatever you should like fear or the greatest threat or the newest king of pirates it may even it may even show a next ruler like it's it's impossible to tell i like these theories these are ones that i think are grounded compared to others that i've heard however i don't think any of them are correct i don't think anything we're going to guess is going to be correct the only thing i think for sure is that it is a straw hat I think that it is as plain as it seems and the mystery behind it will have to be revealed. The reason I think this is because I think there is only one thing that truly matters and that is, are there, are there more? There are other archways, are there more? Because if there's more and power degrades quickly, these hats may have come out into the verse before and we may have Luffy in one of these hats. We may have Mihawk when he once wore those hats. The Yeti Cool Brothers. Yeah, there are loads of people that have worn straw hats. Everyone on Fishman Island. But yeah, so for me, it's are there more? And then the next important thing that I would ask is, has this been out before or has it always been locked away? So what I mean by that is, has this power already been used and therefore they're aware of what exactly this power does and the effects on the verse? Or is this a power in waiting to be released or locked away and preserved? Whichever one it is, it's definitely frozen, it's definitely locked away and it's most likely the national treasure that we have been waiting to find out what it is. Which is... Wow. So moving on, we do see this figure. Now, a lot of people have said that that figure could be um, a king or queen of celestial dragons. They seem to be wearing some form of crown and they're also, you know, they have access towards this uh, national treasure with relative ease. I think that's likely. I think, I hope that we will see them soon. We certainly haven't seen uh, the concept of a celestial dragon ruler and I would personally like to see it as I believe that not all of the celestial dragons are like Charlos. 
some of them must be political, there must be some form of history that they learn, there must be some form of education that they go through, no matter how small, about the celestial dragons. I don't think all of the celestial dragons necessarily know all the secrets, but I do believe that there must be those that know and those that are in power, even among the celestial dragons. So, with that chapter over, and with the new house, we end this video. It's been nice. See you later.